Ralph here, and welcome to True Power Trumpet Fitness on Thrilling Thursday here in Connecticut. Life's good, man. It's sticky and hot as can be. I was out on my bike all morning. I might go out for a little another spin this afternoon. We'll see. <clears throat> I just love to be out in the fresh air, hot, cold, whatever. Anyway, you saw the thumbnail. What John Ware means to me. Completely different thing from... Uh, Vacchiano, Broyles, and Jerry. Completely different thing. Uh, let me get to it. I have played a lot. Let's see what I got, and uh, we'll take it from there. Talk about John Ware. Anyway, hellacious double C's, and what the heck is Ralph doing playing Broadway licks when we're talking about John Ware? Big part of the whole story. Okay, John Ware and what he means to me. First of all, let's get a couple things straight. Before we get into, you know, the whole interaction between me and John, um, <clears throat> I have to say, and this is subjective, but I have to say, in my opinion, he is the most underrated great trumpet player in the history of trumpet. Guys, this guy was so great. He was right there with Herseth. He was right there with Katarabic. I don't put him in the, with Mel or anybody because Mel could do so many things. But orchestrally speaking, right there with Phil Smith. I mean, he was a great orchestral player. So much better than the guys today. In, not even close to what's going on today. This guy was extraordinary. He had knocked it down great chops. Okay? There's a little Jerry connection there, too. Hopped to a high G. Guys, it was as big as a house. Big as a house. And his, <clears throat> I, did, I mean, just iconic Mahler third post horn solo, I believe it was Bernstein, maybe one of the best ever, ever. He was uh, assistant to Vacchiano. He was assistant to Phil Smith. He was assistant to uh, Gerard Schwartz. More than an assistant to Gerard Schwartz. He carried Gerard Schwartz. But I'm just telling you, this guy, creme de la creme of play. Okay, so what did he mean to me? I took about 10 lessons to from him from my last year at Manus. Mel <coughs> was, uh, Mel was going on the road with the Met. I'm not sure where they were going. They might have been going to China, I'm not sure. So he was gonna be gone for a couple months, okay? John Ware had just started there. Vacchiano had retired. And John Ware took his spot. So I hooked up with him for the, like the last two and a half months of my career at Manus. Okay. <clears throat> now, my first day, first day he was there, <clears throat> I was warming up. And like Manus, I told you Manus, it's the weird, the, the original building. It's, they have another building now. But you could hear every note everybody played. And it was just this cacophony of music. And once you got used to it, it was extraordinary. To, that the environment was unbelievable. Anyway, 
I was warming up and my chops felt great. Right up to double C's, I was just killing it. And uh, John, everybody could hear it. And John, uh, I think it was his fourth lesson, I was his fourth lesson of the day. <clears throat> and John's asking everybody, who is this guy? Ah, oh, that's Ralph. And John goes, can he do this every day? Oh yeah, he's a big college student. Really? Now, John Ware, <clears throat> right when he was to audition, for, they made him audition for uh, the job with um, Gerard Schwartz. He's so much better than Gerard Schwartz, but they made him audition, much to his chagrin. He felt if they didn't know how he played at this point, he was playing in the orchestra for 20 years. But anyway, he had to do it. About two weeks before the audition, he's warming up backstage and a stagehand who's carrying a box, didn't see him, walked right into him as he's playing. For the first time in his entire life, his chops hurt. He goes to Jerry. Jerry fixed him right up. So he had a, he had a connection with Jerry. So he, I was one of Jerry's guys. Oh, that's where the chops come from. So I come in, and he says, "Was that you playing all day?" And I said, "Yeah." He says, "Geez, you sound great." We talked about Jerry and all this sort of stuff. And he goes, "So what do you want to play for me?" I don't know. I have this big bag, um, gym bag. Of music and the Walter Smith top tones was right on the top and I barely even opened the book okay he just opens the number one he says let me hear you do this and I'm all but sight reading it and I killed it I killed it ends on high season and killed it and he goes so what do you what do you see yourself doing you got you know a couple months left here at school what do you see yourself doing and I said, well, I love the orchestra and everything, but I gotta say, I gotta make money. You know, I've been doing some commercial things and all this sort of stuff, and I'm thinking Broadway might be a way to go. And he says, do you know anybody? And I said, yeah, I know uh, Chuck Cameron, who was the lead trumpet at Annie. Now, at the time, all of a sudden that makes sense. At the time, Chorus Line and Annie were the rage. Couldn't get a ticket, the biggest thing on Broadway. And he says, do you know the solo to Annie? I said, sure. Now, Annie starts with a pictures and an, exhi at a, and an exhibition type solo all by itself. And it just plays the theme, what I just played. Okay? He says, let me hear that. And uh, so I played it. He says, um, do you know chorus line? I said, sure. He says, let me hear some chorus line. Then he goes, can you shake on the F sharp? There's a big shake in the last part. Shake on the F sharp. And he says, do you know Bob Milliken? And I said, no. And he says, I do. When the time comes, let me know. Okay, another video. So he goes, um, let me hear pictures at an exhibition. And I'm reaching for my C trump. He says, no, 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 I want to hear it on B flat. Okay. He says, uh, do you know Mahler Fifth? I said, sure. Let me hear that. And I'm reaching for my D trumpet. Because Vacchiato had me do that on the D trumpet. He said, no, no, I want to hear it on the B flat. But I got um, but I got um, nailed it. And he gets all done. He says, let me hear, go, humor me. He says, go back to the uh, C trumpet. And let me hear pictures again. I did it on the C trumpet. And he says, you realize that tone might be a little thin on that C trumpet for the orchestra. He says, depending on the orchestra, he said, if you played in Cleveland with Bernard Adelson, you, you, you'd fit right in. He says, let's do this. Let's do, play it again, just like you did, and I will come in on the second part with the second trumpet part. We did it again. To my ears, it blended beautifully. He says, okay, now let me play the first part and you come in on the second part. He says, I take it back. He says, that blends pretty darn good with everything. He says, Phil, Phil Smith, now he's playing second to Phil Smith at that time, is very, very dark and white. It may be a little too much for him, but if you played it on the B flat trumpet, you'd blend right in. And then finally he goes, Look, Ralph, I'm going to leave this up to you. He says, 
I can't teach you anything. He says, if, especially if Broadway is what you want, the commercial stuff, and you know people, he says, go have at it, and you'll do great. He says, what I can do is I can, for the next 10 weeks, until school's done, I can get, go through the, you know, the audition type excerpts again, if you want, and you want my opinion on it. I'm sure you've done it with Vaki Ambrose, but we can do that. Or we can have some fun. He said we can play cornet solos, we can play duets if you want. He said, you know, Mel's duet book in the bag. I said, you know what? Let's, I, I want your take on the um, orchestral stuff. He says, I, I said, I'm not done with that yet. And I wasn't, I ended up getting a job, but that's another video. So we did that. And I said, under one condition, you have to, we have to, at some point, it doesn't have to be today, we have to do the post horn solo. He says, okay, good. And we did that. But the fact that he says, I, John Ware says, I can't teach you anything. You see, at that point in my life, 22 years old, I'm ready to graduate from college. You know, college. I felt I was pretty good, but I'm surrounded by broils. And, so, and for him to say that, to me, filled me with a confidence that you would not believe. You would not believe. He says, you sound fabulous. They're going to love you on Broadway. He says, when the time comes, I'll call Bob and we can get in. Again, down the road. And again, we went through the excerpts and to have a, a different set of ears, you know, going through it. And <clears throat> again, Vacchiano had me doing just about everything on D-Trumpet by that point. He wouldn't let me do it. He says, Ralph, your, your chops are so great. He says, you don't need D-trumpet. He says, wait until you're my age, and if you need a D-trumpet, then, then take it out. But he says, you're doing yourself a real disservice not to do it on the B-flat trumpet. Guys, this is from John. I, I, I can't begin to tell you what that meant to me. As I told you, Vacchiano, very dictatorial. Just, this is, it. you know, Salamone, you can't do this, get out of town. Mel, off in the ozone, and everybody else that you're with is so cutthroat and everything. For a guy of that stature to just tell me, man, you're ready to go. Have a great life, you know. And I kept in touch with him and all this sort of stuff, and uh, he passed away recently. But I'm telling you, just an extraordinary, extraordinary world-class trumpet player for a long time and just one of the nicest people in the whole world. He was about this tall. And the cool thing about it was, he would tell you exactly, he says, no, Ralph, that's not gonna work. That doesn't sound good. But he was such a nice guy, you didn't get insulted by it. Vacchiano said that, you, you think you wanna go slit your wrists. So it was, it was such a wonderful thing to have him in my life at that point. John, I know you're up there, and I appreciate just for the short amount of time, I know you had better students and all this, but I, it meant so much to me to be able to study with you. Anyway, guys, tomorrow we'll do Jerry. I could do 20 of them on Jerry, as you know that, but anyway. Love you all. Have a great day.